The Ferrari 488 Pista is incredibly advanced. Among other things, it has active aerodynamics, a channel at the front to produce downforce and guide the flow better over the hood, and side vents that remove low energy flow. But is it more aerodynamic than Mother Nature's creation, the old man? One similarity between the Ferrari and the old man is that, if you look at the front of the Ferrari, you see a small region of massive flow deceleration. The flow is barely above 5 meters per second. The old man also features this deceleration region over his tummy, and both are accompanied by very high pressure pushing them back. That's not great for drag. But because the Ferrari's nose is very pointy, it has managed to minimize this region and hence the drag, while the old man hasn't. Underneath the front of the Ferrari, we get almost complete flow attachment, which is a major improvement over most cars, where you'd usually get a little bit of flow separation. It is also a major improvement over the old man, where underneath and between its legs, we do get quite a bit of flow separation and very slow flow. For the old man, this comes with a little bit of low pressure sucking him down to the ground, while for the Ferrari, there is slightly higher pressure there. So the Ferrari has traded some downforce for less drag, but the 488 need not worry because the opening underneath funnels air up and we get downforce from that mechanism. And it's worth noting for other cars how Ferrari achieved flow attachment underneath the front. It does it by first of all curving the front up a little and then having that opening for the internal channel which whisks away some air. The old man doesn't feature either of these devices. The Ferrari's underbody is very nice because look at how much low pressure we get, culminating in insanely low pressure around the diffuser. What that does is not only produce downforce, but shift the balance of downforce towards the rear of the car. And that is what you want, because the 488 is rear wheel drive. So more downforce at the rear helps you gain more traction on the wheels that are pushing the car forward. So you can use more of the car's power without having the tire slip. In other words, you can accelerate faster. I don't want to talk about the old man's diffuser. These simulations were done with open foam. And if you want to learn open foam, then check out our courses here. Over the Ferrari's hood, the floor is really nice, and that is partly because of the internal channel funneling air over it. It's also because of how sharp the nose is, it just pierces the air cleanly, and so the incoming flow is only slightly redirected. Ferrari then curved the hood a little bit to help it blend more with the windshield. That comes with a slight flow acceleration, and hence the pressure drops over the hood. That means that we get less traction over the front wheels, but that isn't too bad because it's not in any danger of understeering anyway. The cabin needs some work though because you can see how much the flow accelerates. The free stream velocity is 20 meters per second and here it jumps up over 27 meters per second. That comes with massive low pressure too, which eats into the downforce of the 488. That is a problem that many recent Ferraris have, for example the 458 and the F8, because the cabin is just too bubbly. The rear of the car is doing much better than expected because usually when you have such an exaggerated tapering down, the pressure drops a lot. Here we do get some low pressure, but the rear spoiler helps overcome that by not only producing high pressure over it, but also acting like a little bit of a blockage, which arrests the flow somewhat and that increases the pressure too. And you can see in the wake just how good the rear spoiler and diffuser perform. Between the two of them, the wake shoots up like crazy, and that indicates huge downforce. It really shows how Ferrari is concentrated on producing downforce over the rear wheels. The old man performs very well around the head region, Look at how the flow really stays attached almost to the back of the neck. I think that's largely because of the cap. It is very curved, so the flow can follow it nicely. As a result, there is almost no wake from the head. The torso is another story though. He tries his best by hunching over to keep the flow attached over his back, but it's not completely successful. The flow detaches around the shoulder blade level, and the lower part of his body has a huge wake. And looking at how much the flow shoots down, Unlike the 488, which produces downforce in this region, the old man appears to produce a lot of lift. Looking at the pressure, high pressure forms in front of his face and low pressure behind his head. That creates a force backwards, trying to straighten his posture. From the top view, one thing I'm super impressed with by the 488 is just how well behaved the flow is coming out of the internal channel. The front wheels aren't that good because you can see how much the wake really blows out at this height. That's bad for drag. The old man also suffers from a similar problem, where the floor around the sides really separates and creates huge wakes. So the Ferrari and the old man are pretty much the same here. Because the Ferrari is so blocky at the back, the floor doesn't flow in that much, which leaves a very wide wake. The old man has an even wider wake, relatively speaking. For the drag, 
Most of the 488's front is very, very good, with almost no drag being produced. But after seeing how big the wakes are from the front wheels, it's not surprising to see so much drag from them here. The rear wheels are relatively good. The rear of the car definitely produces the bulk of the drag. The drag production from the old man is really unexpected. There is global maximum behind his neck, which shows that even though the flow is almost attached here, the low pressure in this region just creates so much drag still. The rest of his downstream face produces drag fairly uniformly. Now, the moment of truth. Who produces the least drag and the most downforce? The old man comes in with a drag coefficient of 0.71, but the Ferrari beats him with 0.32, which is really good for a supercar. And while the old man produces a respectable 0.47 kilos of lift, the Ferrari produces 6.1 kilos of downforce. So it's now clear that Ferrari designed the 488 to be more dynamic than an old man. Peace out, amigos.